December 15th, 1902, Volume 4, Louisa Remains Crucified with Jesus. Man is about to be crushed by the weight of divine justice. Continuing in my usual state, I found myself outside of myself, and I found my adorable Jesus cast to the ground, crucified, everyone trampling upon him. In order to prevent them from doing this, I laid myself upon him so as to receive upon myself what they were doing to our Lord. And while I was in that position, I said, Lord, what is it to you to allow those very nails that pierce you to pierce me as well? At that moment, I found myself nailed with the very nails that pierced blessed Jesus, he underneath and I on top. In that position, we found ourselves in the midst of those men who want divorce. And Jesus was sending them many rays of light produced by the sufferings that he and I were suffering, and they remained dazzled and confused. I also understood that if the Lord will please to let me continue to suffer, when they come to do that, they will be humiliated and will not be able to conclude anything. After this he disappeared and I remained alone, suffering. Then he came back again, but he was not crucified. He threw himself into my arms, but he was so heavy that my poor arms could not hold him, and I was about to let him fall to the ground. Seeing that as much as I did and tried I could not hold that weight, my pain was such that I felt myself crying my heart out. And he, seeing the certain danger of falling, and also my crying, cried along. What a harrowing scene! Then, forcing myself up, I kissed him on his face. He too kissed me, and I said to him, My life and my strength, by myself I am weak and can do nothing, but with you I can do everything. Therefore strengthen my weakness by infusing your very strength in me, and I will be able to carry the weight of your person the only way to be able to spare each other this sorrow, for me of letting you fall, and for you of suffering the fall. On hearing this, Jesus told me, My daughter, don't you comprehend the meaning of my heaviness? Know that it is the enormous weight of justice which I can bear no more, nor can you hold, and man is about to be crushed by the weight of divine justice. On hearing this, I cried, and he almost to distract me, since before he came I had a strong fear that I might not be able to obey with regard to certain things, he added, And you, my beloved, why do you so much fear that I may not let you obey? Don't you know that when I draw, unite, and identify a soul with me, communicating my secrets to her, the first key I place which produces the most beautiful sound and communicates the sound to all other keys is the key of obedience. So much so that if the other keys are not in communication with the first key, they will sound in a discordant way, which can never be pleasant to my hearing. Therefore do not fear. Besides, it will not be you, but I myself will obey in you. And since it will be up to me to obey, let me do it, without being concerned. For I alone know well what must be done and how to make myself known. Having said this, he disappeared, and I found myself inside myself. May the Lord be always blessed. December 15, 1905, Volume 6 Jesus wanted to be crucified and lifted up on the cross, so that if they want him, souls may find him. Continuing in my usual state, I was thinking about the passion of blessed Jesus, and he, making himself seen crucified, shared with me a little bit of his pains, telling me, My daughter, 
I wanted to be crucified and lifted up on the cross so that if they want me, souls may find me. So someone wants me as teacher, for he feels the necessity to be instructed, and I lower myself to teach him both the small things and the highest and most sublime, such as to make of him the most learned. Another moans in abandonment, in oblivion. He would like to find a father. He comes to the foot of my cross, and I make myself father, giving him a home in my wounds, my blood as drink, my flesh as food, and my very kingdom as inheritance. Another one is infirm, and he finds me as doctor who not only heals him, but gives him the sure remedies in order not to fall again into infirmities. Another one is oppressed by calumnies, by scorns, and at the foot of my cross he finds his defender, to the point of rendering calumnies and scorns back to him as divine honors, and so with all the rest. So whoever wants me as judge finds me as judge, whoever wants me as friend, as spouse, as advocate, as priest, such do they find me. This is why I wanted to be nailed, hands and feet, to oppose nothing of what they want, to make myself as they want me. But woe to those who, seeing that I am unable to move even one finger, dare to offend me. While he was saying this, I said, Lord, who are those that offend you the most? And he added, Those who make me suffer the most are the religious who, living in my humanity, torment and lacerate my flesh with my very humanity, while one who lives outside of my humanity lacerates me from afar. December 15th, 1906, Volume 7, How the Divine Will Contains All Goods. Continuing in my usual state, I was feeling embittered more than ever because of his privation. In one moment I felt as though absorbed in the will of God, and I felt all my interior appeased, in such a way as to no longer feel myself, but only the divine will in everything, even in his very privation. I myself said to myself, What strength! What enchantment! What magnet this divine will contains such as to make me forget about myself and make the divine volition flow in everything. At that moment he moved in my interior and told me, My daughter, since the divine will is the only nourishing food that contains all flavors and tastes together, which are suitable for the soul, the soul finds her favorite food and becomes appeased. Her desire finds its food and it only thinks of pasturing itself, slowly, and it forms without desiring anything else. Her inclination has nothing else toward which to tend, because it has found the food that satisfies it. Her will has nothing else to will, because the soul has left her own will, which formed her torment, and has found the divine will which forms her happiness. She has left poverty and has found wealth, not human, but divine. In sum, all of the interior of the soul finds its food, that is, its crafting with which it remains so occupied and absorbed as to be unable to move any farther. In fact, while finding all contentments in this food and crafting, the soul finds so much to do and to learn, and ever new things to enjoy. That from a minor science she learns major sciences, and there is always something else to learn. She passes from small things to great things, from one taste she moves to other tastes, and there is always something new to taste in this environment of the divine will. December 15th, 1919, Volume 12. The Divine Will, Font of Good and of Sanctity. I was saying to my always lovable Jesus, 
Since you don't want to tell me anything, tell me at least that you forgive me if I have offended you in anything. And immediately he answered, For what do you want me to forgive you? One who does my will and lives in it has lost the font, the seed, the origin of evil, because my will contains the font of sanctity, the seed of all goods, the eternal origin, immutable and inviolable. Therefore, whoever lives in this font is holy, and evil has no more contact with her. And if evil seems to appear in anything, it does not take root, because the origin, the seed, is holy. This happens also in me. When my justice forces me to strike creatures, it appears that I do harm to them, making them suffer. And how many things they tell me to the extent of telling me that I am unjust. But this cannot be, because the origin, the seed of evil is not in me. On the contrary, in that pain that I send, there is in me a more tender and intense love. Only the human will is font which contains the seed of all evils. And if it seems to do some good, that good is infected, and whoever touches that good will remain infected and poisoned. Afterwards I followed my course, that is, to substitute for all as Jesus has taught me, and as mentioned somewhere else in my writings. While I was doing this, he told me, My daughter, as you keep repeating what I have taught you, I feel wounded by my own love. When I taught you this, I wounded you with my eternal love. When you repeat it for me, you wound me. And just by remembering my words and teachings, it is wounds that you send to me. If you love me, wound me always. December 15th, 1921, Volume 13, Reordering Oneself in Jesus by Fusing Oneself in His Will. Only the acts done in the divine will give themselves back to the origin in which the soul was created and take life within the sphere of eternity. As I was in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus on coming told me, My daughter, Reorder yourself in me. And do you know how you can reorder yourself in me? By fusing all of yourself in my will. Even the breath, the heartbeat, and the air you breathe must be nothing but fusion in my will. So does order enter between creator and creature, and she returns to the origin from which she came. All things are in order, have their place of honor, and are perfect, when they do not move from the origin from which they came. Once they move from the origin, all is disorder, dishonor, imperfection. Only the acts done in my will give themselves back to the origin in which the soul was created, and take life within the sphere of eternity bringing to their Creator the divine homages and the glory of their own will. All other acts remain down below, waiting for the last hour of life, each to undergo its own judgment and the pain it deserves, because there is no act done outside of my will, even good, which can be called pure. The mere lacking aim at my will is to throw mud over the most beautiful works, and then the mere moving from one's origin deserves a penalty. Creation was delivered on the wings of my volition, and on those same wings I would want it to return to me, but I wait in vain. This is why everything is disorder and confusion. Therefore, Come into my will to give me, in the name of all, reparation for such great disorder. 
December 15, 1926, Volume 20, The Little Note of Love. How each act of the will of God done by the creature is one more act of beatitude. I was continuing my round in the creation in order to follow the supreme will in all created things. But while I was doing this, I thought in my mind, what good do I do? What glory do I give to this adorable fiat by going through all created things as though in review to place in them even just one little I love you of mine? Who knows whether this might not be a waste of time that I do? Now, while I was thinking of this, my sweet Jesus moved in my interior and told me, My daughter, what are you saying? With my will, one never wastes time. On the contrary, by following it, one gains the eternal time. Now you must know that each created thing contains a delight, one distinct from the other. And these delights were placed by us and were to serve us to delight ourselves and the creature. Now in each created thing runs our love, and as you go through them, you make the little note of your love run. Don't you want then, in the face of so much love of ours, to place your little notes, your dots, your commas, your little strings that say love, and harmonizing with our love, form the delight wanted by us for ourselves and for you? Only when there is company, then is a delight enjoyed more. Isolation makes the enjoyment die. So the company you give us by going around in the creation makes us remember of our many delights that were placed by us in each created thing. It makes us live through our enjoyments again. And while you delight us, we delight you. And besides, perhaps you too want to leave our will isolated? No, no. It is befitting for the little daughter never to leave her mother alone and to remain always on her knees, to follow her in all her acts. Then after this, my poor mind was swimming in the immense sea of the eternal fiat, and my lovable Jesus added, My daughter, among the many qualities and properties that my will contains, it contains an act of beatitude that is never interrupted, and as many acts as the soul does in it, so many distinct acts of beatitude does she take into her soul. So the more acts she does in this fiat, the more she becomes the owner and forms a greater capital of these beatitudes within herself that give her highest peace on earth. And in heaven she will feel all the effects and the enjoyments of these beatitudes that have formed within her. See, it is as though natural. While you are on earth, my will in heaven releases from itself an act ever new of infinite beatitude. Now who takes this new act that never ceases? The saints, the angels who live of divine will in heaven. However, it is not fair that one who is in the exile and lives in my will lose all these acts of beatitude. Rather, with justice, they are placed as though in reserve within her soul so that when she departs for her celestial fatherland, she may enjoy them all together to catch up with others in receiving that new act of beatitude that is never interrupted. Do you see then what it means to do one more act or one less in my will? It is to have as many more acts of beatitude for as many more times as one has done my will and to lose them for as many times as she has done her own. And she takes not only many acts of beatitude, but many acts of sanctity, of divine science, many distinct acts of beauty, of love, for as many times as she has done my will. And if she has been always in my eternal fiat, she will have within herself the sanctity that resembles her creator. Oh, how beautiful she will be. In heaven, the echo of our beatitudes, the echo of our sanctity, the echo of our love will be heard in this fortunate creature.
In sum, she has been our echo on earth, and she will be our echo in the celestial fatherland. December 15th, 1935, volume 34. How true love wants to make itself known, spread itself out, and run and fly in search of the one whom it loves, because it feels the need of being loved in return. Power of the creating act that one receives when one goes around in the creation. My poor mind is always transported into the sea of the divine will that makes present to me and holds as in act everything that it has done for love of creatures. And it longs that they recognize what it has done, how much it has loved us, and it waits for us in its acts in order to tell us, let us do it together. Do not make me work alone so that what I do, you do. And so we can say, with equal love we have loved each other. How beautiful it is to be able to say in turn, you have loved me and I have loved you. It is the compensation of the greatest works and of the most sorrowful sacrifices. So my mind went around in the creation, in that act when the omnipotent fiat, pronouncing itself, created and extended the azure sky. And my eternal love, in order to have me together with it in that act, and my sweet Jesus made feast, that it had its company, and stopping me, he told me, my good daughter, to love and to not make oneself known is against the nature of true love, because true love, as by itself, spreads itself out and runs. It flies in search of the one whom it loves, and then it stops when it finds her. It encloses her in itself. It hides her in its love. And transforming her into its own flames, it wants to find its own love in her, its own works done by the one whom it loves for love of it. And since the creature can never do what we do for her, our love, in order to have its intent, calls the creature to itself. It hides her in its own love, and it lets her operate together with our creating and conserving act. And so in reality the creature can say, I have loved you. What you have done for me, I have done for you. And in reality, we feel re-loved by her with our love and with our own works. You must know that as the creature elevates herself with her will into ours, into the things created by us, our supreme being renews over her the creating act. And oh, the marvels that we do of graces, of sanctity, of sky, of suns in her soul. Our act delights to be repeated, and as she goes around in created things, our love wants to make itself known. It wants to make her touch with her hand how much it loves her, and it repeats over her our creating act that is never subject to ceasing in a way that she feels all the ardor of our love, the power of our works, and taken by amazement, she loves us with our creative strength that we have infused in her. And oh, our contentment in seeing ourselves known and loved by the one whom we love so much. This is why we created so many things, because we await the creature in order to make ourselves known how much we love her, and so as to give to her in every created thing the potentiality of our love in order to make us loved. Love, when it is not known, is rendered unhappy, and when it is not re-loved by the one whom it loves, it feels itself lose life, hindered, the steps broken, and its most beautiful works placed in oblivion. On the other hand, when it is known and loved, its life multiplies, there is our creating act over the creature in order to be loved as we love her. Our steps are free, rather they fly in order to take us to the beloved creature, 
to clasp her to our bosom so as to love her and make ourselves loved. Our love feels the happiness of the love that she brings. Therefore, there is no greater honor that she can give us than coming into our divine will. We, as we see her come, place at her disposition the whole of creation, because it is hers. For her it was made, and as she goes around in each created thing, she finds our creative power that, investing her, communicates our love that each one possesses and she can love us with our creative strength that rises, and she can love us as she wants and as much as she wants. And so the love of the creator and of the creature kiss each other, the one rests in the other, and both feel the contentment of truly loving each other. Oh, how beautiful is the company of one who loves us. So much is our contentment that our love rises and invents other more beautiful works, other loving industries, in order to make us loved. End of December 15th. Fiat.